welcome to today's webcast. The topic for today is near real time brand sentiment analysis with AWS and QuickSight. My name is Sushma Sekar and I'm a data and analytics consultant with Tharugood Associates and I work from our Bangalore office. I've shared my email ID and LinkedIn details on the screen. So if you'd like to reach out to me after this webcast and connect with me on LinkedIn, feel free to do so and I'll be happy to respond to any questions you have. Let's look at the agenda for the session. So I'll quickly introduce Thurugud and then move right into what sentiment analysis is. I'll cover the architecture we're using for the purpose of this demo next and move on to show you the actual services and the dashboard in the AWS management portal. Finally, I'll talk about what more we can explore in sentiment analysis and how Tharugood can help you get started with it. So for those of you who don't know Tharugood, we're an independent data and analytics consultancy specializing in data engineering, data science and data visualization. We're a global organization with offices in London, Philadelphia, Boston, Singapore, Sao Paulo and Bangalore and I'm joining from our Bangalore office today. With our technical expertise combined with our strong analytical skills, data understanding ability and business focus, we help our customers approach and solve their business problems and make sense of their data. We work with a variety of customers in consumer goods, pharma and life sciences, banking and insurance, real estate and a range of others. We're an independent consultancy in the sense that we're not tied to one specific technology. We work and partner with key players in the data and analytics space that you can see on the screen here. As this is an AWS related webcast, I want to call out our AWS partnership. We have experience building solutions in AWS and you'll find a range of AWS related content on our website and YouTube channel as well. We are a select partner with AWS and have experience in QuickSight too, among other tools for data visualization in the market. So moving on to talk about what sentiment analysis is. It is a technique that uses natural language processing to determine the underlying sentiment of a given text. It uses machine learning to identify and classify the polarity in the content into different buckets, positive, negative, neutral. Sentiment analysis can help businesses understand how users are perceiving their brand or product in general or an idea or a marketing campaign as well most commonly from what they may post on social media about it. In addition to help you understand user perception of your own brand and competition, it can also help you understand more about what's working well in different parts of the world, how people are reacting to it on social media, track sentiment over time to see if there's a specific day or time at which mentions or sentiments spike, get real-time alerts for it and get to the bottom of it to see what may have caused it, perhaps a new commercial, you can also understand the success of a marketing campaign through this sort of analysis. So you can get valuable insights into how customers feel about your products or services. Try and understand what their pain points can be and what they'd like to see from you in the future. Sentiment analysis can help you make smarter data driven decisions that will have a positive impact on your business. So now moving on to the architecture. On the screen, you see a diagram with some AWS services. What I'm going to do next is talk a little bit about each of these services to help you understand what is used in this demo end to end. So for this demo, we are ingesting data from Twitter. So there's a Python script running in an Amazon EC2 instance that connects to the Twitter API to consume live streaming data, the tweets. So EC2 is the compute service offered by Amazon. And the Python script running in this EC2 instance uses the TweetPy library to connect to Twitter. There are some filters on the tweets such as language. So we filtered for tweets in English and location. So the script looks for keywords related to Oscars, NFL, the Super Bowl and COVID in the tweet message. That's something we've configured as a filter. And we're collecting tweets related to Oscars and NFL from across the world. And for COVID, we've added a location filter. We're capturing tweets from the UK and the US only. So the Python script then adds the raw tweets to the Amazon Kinesis Firehose delivery stream. So Kinesis is the streaming service offered by AWS. And as part of Amazon Kinesis Data Firehose, the raw tweets, which are the source records, are transformed using AWS Lambda. So the Lambda function makes use of Amazon Comprehend for detecting the sentiment of tweets. So Lambda is the serverless compute service offered by AWS. You don't have to worry about the compute resources required to run code. And the Lambda function 
like I mentioned, invokes the Amazon Comprehend libraries. Comprehend is the NLP service offered by Amazon. The records containing the tweets and their sentiments are further converted to Parquet format in Amazon Kinesis Firehose for easy analysis and better storage and are delivered to an Amazon S3 bucket when the buffer condition is reached. The Parquet files are stored in the S3 bucket and Amazon Athena is used to query the Parquet data in the S3 bucket. And Athena is the analytics service offered by AWS. We've then built a dashboard in Amazon QuickSight, which is the data visualization service offered by AWS. I'm going to next navigate to the AWS management console to show you all these services and the QuickSight dashboard as well. So for those of you new to AWS, this is what the management console looks like. I'm going to navigate to the EC2 console where you can see the virtual machine that I've spun up. It's in the US East region and there's a Python script running in this virtual machine, like I mentioned, that's directing the tweets to Amazon Kinesis. So as part of Amazon Kinesis, we have a Lambda function that is transforming tweets. The first transformation is it detects the sentiment using libraries from Amazon Comprehend. After the sentiment detection has happened on the tweets, the records are converted to Apache Parquet format and stored in S3 buckets. So the data in S3 buckets are queried using Amazon Athena. So I've written a simple SQL query to select from a table in Athena. This shows me the top 10, the latest 10 tweets that are coming in related to the topic NFL. So you can see the tweets, you can see the sentiment associated with the tweets. You can see the score that Comprehend associates with the tweet. You can see the time of the tweet and you can also pin it down to the actual user who is tweeting. So I'm going to next navigate to the QuickSight dashboard. So I have two pages, one for NFL and Oscars and one for COVID. So since we're collecting data related to NFL and Oscars from across the world, I've separated this into two different pages. So on the left, you see trend charts. So this helps us track the sentiment related to a specific topic over time. So if you see, the first one is related to Oscars and the second one is related to NFL. So I see a sudden spike in positive sentiment on the 5th of February but in tweets related to Oscars. And I see a dip in sentiment on the 14th of February in tweets related to NFL after the Super Bowl. So these sort of analyses can help you understand when there is a spike in sentiment or mentions and try and get to the bottom of it to understand what may have contributed to this spike and if you need to react to a crisis. So you can also do a topic breakdown by sentiment. So here I see that there is predominantly neutral sentiment, but you can also see the percentage of positive and the negative sentiment. You can also do a location wise analysis. So you see the number of tweets related to Oscars and NFL in different locations and also try and understand the sentiment behind it. So what Comprehend also allows us to do is break down the tweets into different entities. So I see that Rihanna is the most mentioned person in tweets related to NFL. So this sort of information can help you understand who you want to collaborate with in your commercials or in other aspects. So you can also see the organizations that are mentioned the most related to a specific topic. So that way you can try and understand who your competitors are in that space and plan next steps accordingly. So you can track daily sentiment score on an average and for NFL tweets, the sentiment score is to on the negative side and for tweets related to Oscars, today's sentiment is on the positive side. So this is something you can track. You can also look at what some of the latest tweets are related to this topic. What you can also do is identify the source for these tweets. Like for example, are people tweeting from their web app or iPhones or Android? If you're a banking sector and if you'd like to release different features for different devices, so you can try and understand what kind of devices people are using the most so you can prioritize your release of features accordingly. So 
this is the first page where we've analyzed data related to NFL and Oscars from Twitter. So I'm going to move on to the second page where we've done some analysis on tweets related to COVID. So I see that the sentiment is predominantly on the negative side in both UK and the US. But I see a sudden dip in sentiment in the UK on the 9th of February. So this shows you that there's something that happened on the 9th of February that may have contributed to this dip in sentiment. So you can go back and do some analysis to understand what may have contributed to this. There's some controversial news that came out. So you can try and get to the bottom of it to try and understand how you can react to this sort of situation. I've also created a word cloud with the highlights in entities related to COVID from the tweets from UK and US. Moving on, I've done a breakdown by sentiment for tweets related to COVID in both the UK and the US. And I see that there is a little more negativity in the tweets from the US, even though both of these countries have predominantly neutral sentiment related to this topic. You can also do a location-wise analysis to understand where are the maximum tweets coming from, what is the sentiment in that location. So the ones in green are the relatively the most positive and the ones in red and orange are relatively more negative. And you can also see the number of tweets in each location in the US and UK. And here are some of the latest tweets related to COVID from the US and UK and the associated sentiment and the source for these tweets. So this is a sample dashboard that we've put together for sentiment analysis. There's obviously a lot more you can do as part of sentiment analysis. And I'm going to talk about some of them in the next few slides. So what else can we explore? So you can do a key phrase analysis to understand what can contribute to the sentiment. Like, for example, a user may have tweeted that I like the mint flavor and the feeling of freshness in toothpaste A, but not toothpaste B. So this way, you can try and understand what's working or not working for you and also what is working better for your competitors. You can also compare data from a few years ago versus now to see what may have changed. For example, has the pandemic had an effect in how the users perceive or consume your product? For the purpose of this demo, we've used data from Twitter, but we can also ingest data from other social media platforms. We filtered for tweets in English for this demo, but you can also analyze text in different languages. You can also try and detect the underlying emotion behind a message. We want to understand whether users are angry or if fear is a predominant emotion or surprise. So all of this can help you understand underlying reasons for the sentiment and how you can change your approach to addressing the situation based on the emotion. For example, if you identify that users are frustrated, you can pin it down to the fact that users are not happy with the user interface of your mobile app. So sort of analysis can try and understand why there is negative sentiment related to your product or your brand. So you can also set up real time alerts when there is a spike in mentions or sentiment and go on to understand what factors may contribute to this using a combination of some of these techniques that we've discussed, like key phrase analysis or emotion detection. So social media data analysis can help you be both proactive and reactive. You can proactively monitor and track the change in sentiment over time to plan next steps or react to a crisis. For example, a commercial gone wrong. So if you'd like to get started with sentiment analysis at your organization, we at Thorogood can help you with that. So feel free to reach out to me or any of my colleagues at Thorogood and we can set up a workshop with the business stakeholders at your organization to be led by our consultants to understand how sentiment analysis and social media data analysis can be utilized to help meet your current business goals. So if you're interested, we can create a proof of concept or a demo to prove the value of this use case. And if you'd like to explore different cloud technologies for implementing sentiment analysis outside of AWS and QuickSight, we can help you with that as well. And if you'd like to review some existing architecture to see where AWS or QuickSight can fit in, that's something we'd be interested to help you with as well. So for more information on any of these points, feel free to reach out to me on my email or LinkedIn or any of my other colleagues at Thorogood. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed the webcast. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn or email. And I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you very much.